A new batch of the Barefoot African Rangers just landed on US soil in new colors too. We got all black, we got green, walnut veg retan, and a natural veg retan. It looks a lot like natural chrome excel. They're limited quantities and they only do these in batches and it takes months to, them to make a new batch, ship it all the way across the world on a boat from South Africa. And so that's why we do them in batches and that's why you should get a pair before they're gone. So check them out below. All right, I got my iPad. So I think we're officially ready. So this is going to be pretty interesting unboxing because I'm not even sure if you guys are going to see this. So I'm going to record this and hope that I can convince Nick's to show you guys because they've been co cooking up something pretty interesting over the last, I don't know, about a year or so, I think, where Nix is known for making some of the heaviest duty, like, t like it's, it's pretty indisputable to me that Nix and these Pacific Northwest guys make the highest quality work boots in the entire world. They're... Yeah, it's, there's really not much more to it than that, if we're being honest. Like, they, that's just what they do. They they use the thickest, heaviest leathers. They use uh, sidles leather. That's, they make work boot leather. They use these big, chunky outsoles, all the leather through the midsole, quadruple stitch, triple stitch, double row of stitched. It's just, it's, it's, it's a literal tool compared to most stylish boots. And the the guys at Nix, I think, I think, uh, they wanted to do a little personal project, a little passion project to see what Nix could do if they made an actual more dressy boot. And it's not that they don't make more casual and dressy boots because they have their 55 last, they have their Robert boot that's a really handsome little short, almost like Western looking boot. It kind of reminds me of like a short drifter. That's, that's part of where we've got the inspiration from it, I'm sure. Um, they have casual versions of everything where that's the, they got the smooth sole rather than the big luggy soles and uh, But they, they don't they don't really have something that's like a, a true and true like dress boot, you know, most of them are Heritage dress ish or a work dress, but nothing fully dress Because that's not what Nick's does. Nick's specializes in making the highest quality most durable hardest work in work boots in the entire world So when I saw they dropped a little teaser about a new sub brand called house Brandle, first of all I was like that's a pretty sick name like it reminds me of Game of Thrones house Targaryen house uh, As I can't remember any of the freaking houses house Stark house Lannister um, so I love that name and they teased a couple photos and they, they showed like what they're gonna do with it. It's a really clean boot, but more importantly, it's on a completely different last. And lasts are expensive. You know, boot, boot brands rarely upgrade their last because they're a huge pain to grade all the patterns to the new last and make it fit. And they're just expensive to buy. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to get a, a last run, let alone enough last that you can have a big production going. And so, Anytime I get a new last, I hear about a new last, I get excited anytime I hear like a little passion project from one of these guys that are making boots at the top tier of the entire world, I get excited. And so I hit uh, Nick's up and I was like, hey, uh, what do I need to do to get a pair of those? Like, I like, I, I really want to try these out. Like maybe we could do some really cool shell cordovan. I've got some interesting shell on the way that I ordered. So I was, I was texting the Nick's guys and I was like, what do I need to do to get a pair of those? I want to like try this new last you guys are in. I like I I'm not much of a dress boot guy, but a Nick's dress boot that piques my interest. And so um, we talked about it, and I was like, I ordered this really unique shell from this one company that found this cordovan or this leather at the bottom of the uh, ocean and the, or the, uh, some lake or something or the Mediterranean Sea, and like they're recreating the formula from this thing they found. I, I don't have any information on it. I should have that prepared for this video, but it's something along the lines of it's cordovan that's recreated from a, a hundreds of years ago based off a formula they found, I think in like a notebook in a, a shipwreck or something in like the Mediterranean or something crazy. And so I was like, that would be a perfect boot for that leather. And, uh, but because that leather is so stinking expensive and because uh, custom boot fitting is such a nightmare, I was like, is there any way you could like ship me a try on pair? Uh, like, do you have any extras you guys have made in my size ish? Like, I'm I'm happy to pay for them. Like, whatever. And and the guys at Nix were like, we'll just we'll just make you one. We'll send it to you and like, see if it fits because we don't want to mess up a really expensive boot on this new last with this new pattern and all this stuff. And so that's what's in this this boot or this box is I'm not sure what the boot is, what colors and anything, but it's a trial pair on their new last. 
And I thought you guys might just be interested to kind of hear more about the last and what they're doing and all the stuff in the future. So I wanted to do unboxing and try to convince Nix to let me post this for you guys. So let's cut it open and see how it compares and see what they've done here. I can't see. The boxings are the worst. Ooh, black. Okay, so it's it's not their new pattern, but it's definitely the new last. You can see how, how pointy that thing is. Oh, I love these. These This might be my favorite thing that Nick's does and sends is like these QC checklists. I just, I just like this. I think it's a cool little, like I, I save these because I, I like knowing who, who sewed it and, and who did the hardware, like all the last things. I don't know, it's just a cool little thing. I like that they send these. Whether it's just me that they send it to or if it's everybody, if it isn't everybody, they should send it because I like, I like saving these little things. We got our other shoe boot. And that's it, a couple, couple Nick stickers. With the classic American lager style. Love it. So, what do we have here? <laughs> As I drop the brand new boots. That's a good looking boot. So the thing I like about this is you compare this to the 55 last that lots of people really, really love. It's not nearly as high of a hill. It's, it's a lot more of a casual dress heel stack versus more of a Western in the 55 because to get that arch support in the 55, you really have to bring that heel up in order to get that contouring to actually fit your foot. Because if you had all that arch support on a lower dropped heel, even a zero drop, you'd be kind of like leaning back and it just, it just doesn't work as well. The weight doesn't get just distributed nearly as well if it's not on a higher heel, as you can clearly see from this cross section. So it's more of a heel of the, like the uh, H and W last and the, and the Munson last, and I like that because I, unless it's a cowboy boot or like a Western boot, I like lower heels because I'm tall, and uh, and they're just a little more comfortable to walk around in. You don't get that that like fancy like cowboy heel toeing around that I like doing in the in the drifter boots that we collaborate with Whites on. Um, so this is a nice like middle ground. This is almost, it, I, that's kind of what it is to me, honestly. And, and I think part of what I like, why I like this initially is because this feels even more, it's similar to like a Western and, and uh, dress hybrid because it's a Pacific Northwest brand. And it's not, they're not necessarily Western, but they're clearly American. They're like the most American boot brands, maybe except for origin. And it's a very American way of making boots. It's got the history, it's got the lineage and they're just made in a very American way. And so I, I like this concept, even just for this particular boot. And the whole brand, house brand concept is, we're taking the heart of American boot making and seeing what they can do when it comes to more of a dress boot, the more fancy, like it, it's almost like taking a blue collar brand and, and uh, seeing what they can do with a white collar concept. So I like that juxtaposition, I like that contrast. And so, and, and some people are, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, well, Nick's can't quite, finish them as well as some of these other brands. And to me, that's part of the charm because that's what NYX does. They, they make some of the highest quality boots, but they focus on the functionality, not the form. They still you know, consider the form, but it's way more function than anything. And so to start blending those a little bit more to where it's 50-50 is really interesting versus like most dress boots. It's like 90% casual in dress and like 10% quality, especially, you know, it's the whole Alden thing where I'm like, I feel like the boots should be like high quality if you're gonna pay the money for them. And some people are just like, no, we just want to be comfortable and like look nice. We don't care about the quality. So that's why I like this. Cause I'm like, oh, that's like a cool infusion of both of those. But I wanted to kind of look at what the House Brandle website has on it. Because it's been a while since I've done a little dive on this. And and this is clearly not their reg the pattern they're doing on the Brandle brand. This is their, I guess it's just their typical pattern, really. And that's, that's a question I had about this. What is this last even called? Well, they're, they're calling it the 1925 last. They say it's sleek almond shaped toe profile is a testament to its refined design. The, the tighter SPI stitch per inch. That means they've really cranked uh, the, the sewing machines to sew a lot more stitches per inch compared to work boots where they'd space them out a little bit more. Tighter stitching is allegedly less durable and a lot finer looking versus wider stitches are more durable. They use thicker thread, um, but it isn't as refined. And looking at these two boots, just to see if they if they did the stitch density different on this compared to their regular boots, it looks like they did do the stitch density tighter. What about the welt? The welt the welt looks about the same density. And like and once again, this is this isn't the Brandle boot. This is a 
a makeup boot for me or a, a, a trial size boot for me to, to get this dialed in before I send them that really fancy shell and have a, have a makeup boot that doesn't fit. Single row of stitch down on the welt not only adds an elegant touch but also pays homage to to a traditional stitch down work boots that form the foundation of this exceptional floor. Yeah, so they, they're right in line with like my thinking on this. I, like it's it's a cool little concept. Uh, the JR outsole, so obviously it doesn't have a JR outsole, which is that oak bark tan where they literally put layers and layers of leather into a pit under the, like into the foundation of the tanneries, wherever this is at. I think it's either Germany or England. And they seal them up and they, they put water in it. They put a bunch of the, like the oak, bark that gets ground up and that's what turns the flesh in that's rottable into leather that doesn't rot and it's like this year-long process it makes really hard leather it's the most durable leather in the world for outsoles and it's very expensive so that's going to be a cool little bit they're also going to be calfskin lined these ones are not lined once again because they're just a try on boot and then the piece de resistance brass accents throughout the entire boots. Oh, that's the cool thing about what they're gonna do is they're, they're gonna put like a, a brass heel insert, which I think is a really cool little touch. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of always doing wacky stuff and doing things no one's done before. And I've never seen anyone do that on a boot. And so I'm, I'm really interested to see how that looks when it's all finished up. I think it's a nice little touch. Cause that's the hard thing. Everyone's been making boots for so long. It's hard to find a little new thing that no one's ever done before. And uh, let's see what else they say. It looks like they're gonna have a bunch of different leather colors and options for this with Wicked and Craig double stuff, Wicked and Craig uh, uh, a lot of double stuff. A uh, gallon, galoon, galoon, calfskin. I don't even know what that tannery is. I've never even heard of that tannery. Must be some uh, dress brand tannery that I'm not familiar with because I'm not a big dress boot guy. This is what I was trying to get at. So the, on, their, on their website about the boot, Legacy, handcrafted by the best boot makers at NYX. One boot per hide, because they utilize some of the best parts of the hide. Fully lined, I'm interested to see what a fully lined NYX boot feels like. I've never I've never had a pair of NYX that's lined. Uh, the last, and then JR leather. So not only is the outsole leather, but it looks like the midsole, the heel, the toe puff, um, and the outsole are all from the JR tannery in Germany. So that's what I was talking about, that they, they have a giant pit under the tannery that's specifically made for sealing up leather for a year or six months, whatever it is. I think the whole process takes a year, but six months in the pit, if I remember, remember correctly. And uh, yeah, it's, and then cleaner finishes. So it, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm really curious to see how these turn out. So I think now let's try them on because I think we've done enough comparisons of the last, if we did, even did it, you can see it, the, the 1925 last compared to the H&W quite a bit more narrow and then even wider is your months and last you can see completely different shapes like not even really in the same ballpark and then our cut in half 55 I don't, I don't even have a 55 last of any of these Pacific Northwest brands just because it doesn't fit my foot very well and I don't like my toes squished some people do but yeah you can see it's even different there and maybe a better way to show this for the 55 compared to the 1925 is the stitching on the bottom that kind of shows it better of the actual shape of where it's being sewn because that's right on the welt that goes all the way through there so it's like they took the 55 dropped the heel made it just a little more almond shaped but it's still pretty wide like you look here at the forefoot it, it doesn't look crazy and this is a size nine and a half d i am a 10 technically like a 10 c on the brannock but i say d because I'm especially sensitive with having my toes squished, and so it kind of evens out. So I'm 10D on the Brannock. I got a 9.5D. Most of other Knicks, their H&W, I take a 9.5. Their, their Munson, I take a 9.5. Occasionally, I'll go a little bit wider. If I'm really not wanting my toes squished, I'll go up to an E-width just for fun. So let's try it on and see how the sizing is. <laughs> I just realized that I have these. I don't... I don't know if these are released yet, but I got these all black African Rangers and they're so sick. So random plug of another random boot. I'm interested to see what the final version has for all these other components. Cause this, like I said, like four times, but you gotta be clear sometimes with this, this type of thing. Cause people, people sometimes miss when you say it once, but this is not the final product. This is a NYX boot on this last, so I can try the last. So we'll see what the real boot looks like when we get it done. Okay, enough rambling. Let's put these freaking boots on. See how they fit. That 
that's the that's the sound of the Pacific Northwest. That thunk. even like on brand new boots, you get that because it's like really heavy leather. It, it's just nice. Anyway, let's see how these fit. Got the nice kilties in there. Yeah, these fit. I think that's right. You know, compare the difference. This side, African Rangers with big old baggy grandma socks and toe, toe spacers in it compared to a dress, a very expensive high quality dress boot. So I think that's a, I think it's the size for me. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I'm a nine and a half, basically everything in Nick's, including their new 1925 last for the house brand or brand. So uh, I think that's everything. So stay tuned for when we actually make that really rare cordovan pair with these guys uh that was like recovered from a rest a leather recipe found in a, a sunken ship or something crazy so that's gonna be a cool one and i figured out the size and i'm not even sure if this brand is fully launched when it's gonna be launched if you're even gonna see this video if you're you know so i don't know let me know what you think and thank you guys for supporting these unboxing is so fun like it's it's a way for me to enjoy this this whole thing that we're doing on a personal level because i like making the videos on the main channel but this is more of like the really fun stuff that gets that's for the main videos you don't always see you know because unboxing stuff is fun regardless even in like cheap amazon pot packages that come up or come to the shop i'm like nobody touched my let me unbox them i like it's christmas morning every day so thank you guys for supporting these they're very fun and it's uh cool that the brands are willing to send me stuff to unbox for you guys to show you what they're working on and some of the cool things that they have in the in the pipeline and uh, I feel very fortunate to be able to do this so thank you guys see ya